Tonight's topic is called Spoiled Possession, the Independent Black Woman. Spoiled Possession, the Independent Black Woman. We're going to open up with the book of First Timothy 2, verse 14. First Timothy, chapter 2, verse 14. First Timothy 2, verse 14. Let's start there. First Timothy, chapter 2, verse 14. And Adam was not deceived. Come on. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Read that again. First Timothy, chapter 2, verse 14. And Adam was mm -hmm. not deceived. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. He says, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So the Apostle Paul is reminding us that Adam didn't, Adam was not the one that was deceived. Eve was. You understand? Eve was the one that went off. Okay. Because of what? We're going to read about what Eve did for her to be deceived. Read that again. Verse 14. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 14. And Adam was not deceived. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So now Adam didn't make a mistake. Okay. Adam did not make a mistake. They call it presumptuous sin. Adam didn't make a mistake. Read that part again. Read it again. Verse 14. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 14. And Adam was not Read. deceived. But the woman mm -hmm. being deceived was in the transgression. You see that thing? But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. All this, I made a statement that Adam, Adam was not deceived. Yes, as we're reading as it is written, but it was not a mistake what Adam did. It was presumptuous sin. Watch this. Give me 1 Corinthians 15 verse 45. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 45. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 45. Come and on. so it is written, the first man, Adam, mm. was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Read that again. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was mm. made a quickening spirit. You see what it says right there? So and so it is written. The first Adam, the first, the first Adam, <laughs> the first Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Hmm, that's some heavy stuff right there. Hold this. Give me second Ezra. Second Ezra chapter 3, verse 21. Second Ezra. Second Ezra chapter 3 and verse 21. Second Ezra chapter 3 verse 21. For the first okay. Adam, bearing a wicked heart, transgressed and was overcome. Come on. And so be all they that are born of him. So it says the first Adam, bearing a wicked heart, transgressed because it was presumptuous sin. It wasn't a mistake. For the first Adam, bearing a wicked heart, transgressed and was overcome. And so be all they that are born of him. Go back to where he was at now. Second, First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 45. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 45. And so it is written. The first man Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was mm -hmm. made a quickening spirit. The last Adam. The last Adam. That's talking about Christ. Come on. How be it. That was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural, Come and on. afterward, that which mm -hmm. is spiritual. So the first Adam was says what he says that he, he says how be however that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural. You understand? And afterward, that which is spiritual. Going into the first Adam and the last Adam, Adam in Genesis. And Christ, which is the last Adam. Go ahead. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. You see that thing? Read that part again. Verse 47 is the key. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 47. The first man is of the earth, earthy. 
The second man mm -hmm. is the Lord from heaven. You see that thing? The second man is the last Adam. Jump back up to verse 45. Verse 45. And so it is written. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. So the first man, Adam, was, a ma was ma made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. How did he quicken us? Guess what? By faith, when he died. Go ahead. Verse 47 again. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 47. The first man Great. is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. The second man is the Lord from heaven. So the first Adam, guess what? He is the one that transgressed. The last Adam, let's talk about Christ. He was a quickening spirit. John 6, 63. Give me that. John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that quickens. Mm -hmm. The flesh profiteth nothing. Really? It is the what? It is the spirit that quickeneth. It is the spirit that quickeneth. Come on. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto Come you, on. they are spirits and mm -hmm. they are life. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Because guess what? Christ, the words that he spoke unto you, they quickened us. Give me that in Ephesians 2 verse 1. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Ephesians 2, verse 1. Watch this. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. Mm. And you had he quickened who were dead. Who had he what? And you had he quickened mm -hmm. who Come were on. dead in trespasses and sins. You see that thing? It says, and you had he quickened. Who quickened us? Christ, Christ quickened us. Read that part again. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses mm -hmm. and sins. Who were dead in trespasses and sins. So the Lord from heaven is talking about Christ. He was the quickening spirit. He quickened us. Who we was what? We was dead in trespasses and sins. Okay. Now. Go back to um, 1 Timothy 2, verse 14. I know I'm not explaining too much about this because it's not a nice topic. I'm just touching it. I'll explain to you the laws will sometime in the future. All right. But what you want to know, what I want to show you here is that Adam didn't make a mistake. You understand? It was all the plan of the Most High so that his son Christ can be sent in the last days. That's exactly what happened during the time of Rome and the second coming of the Messiah, that which we are preparing for. You understand? So what happened with Adam, it was not a mistake. You understand? It was the plan of the Most High. So he can send his son Christ during the time of Rome and in the second coming, which we are preparing for. Go back to 1 Timothy 2 verse 14. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 14. And Adam was not what? deceived, but the woman... Mm -hmm. Being deceived was in the transgression. You see that thing? But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Adam was not deceived, but the black woman was. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Genesis 2 verse 7. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Let's back up a little bit. You say Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. That's where the transgression was. You understand? So let's see what happened. Genesis 2 verse 7. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. And the Lord Come God on. formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into mm -hmm. his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Breathe. So you see that part? And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. So this is talking about Adam here. You understand? Adam was breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Give me that in Proverbs 7 verse 2. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 2. Let's see what is this breath that was breathed into Adam. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 2. Let's get there. Proverbs the 7 verse 2. Keep my commandments and live. 
keep my commandments and live and live. Go ahead. And my law as the apple of thine eye. You see that thing? And my law as the apple of thine eye. So now, Adam was given the breath of life, which is what? The commandments. This is what was breathed into Adam's nostrils. I know some of a lot of you, some of you, you know this, but guess what? Although you know it, but the way you behave is like it's just one ear out the other. You understand? So now, give me that in John 20, verse 22. John 20, verse 22. Watch this. John chapter 20, verse 22. We're still dealing with what was given to Adam, what was breathed into his nostrils. Okay, come on. John chapter 20, verse 22. Mm -hmm. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said he unto them, he breathed on them. When he had said this, he breathed on them. This is talk about Christ now with the disciples. He breathed on them the same way Adam was breathed into his nostrils, the breath of life. Read that again. Verse 22. John chapter 20, verse 22. And when mm -hmm. he had said this, he breathed on them. Uh -huh. And saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost, meaning the laws of God, because that what that, that is what was breathed into Adam's nostrils. Adam was given the breath of life. There's a reason why I'm going through this. Give me the, the book of Job 33, verse 4. Job chapter 33, verse 4. Job chapter 33, verse 4. The mm -hmm. Spirit of God hath made me. And the Wait. breath of the Almighty hath given me life. You see that thing? The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. That's the same thing we read in John 63. The same thing we read in John 20, verse 22. The same thing we read in Proverbs chapter 7, verse 2. He's saying the same thing. Luke 24, verse 45. Luke 24, verse 45. I'm just getting some more precept for you. Luke 24. Verse 45. Read what you got. Luke chapter 24, verse, verse 45. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand mm -hmm. the scriptures. You see what Christ did? He opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Because where your understanding, where does it take place? In your mind. He you opened their minds. He opened their spiritual ears to receive the understanding of the scriptures. That's the same thing that was ha that happened to Adam. So what did Adam receive? He received the understanding of the scriptures. That's what was given to Adam. Understanding of the scriptures, which was the power the Lord gave unto him. Watch this. Give me 2nd Esdras chapter 3, verse 5. 2nd chapter 3, verse 5. 2nd Esdras chapter 3, verse 5. And gavest a body unto Adam without soul, which was the workmanship of thine hands, and didst breathe into him the breath of life. And he was made living before thee. So our forefather Esdras, he is going over the history now, you understand? And did breathe into him the breath of life, and he was made living before thee. That's Genesis 2 verse 7, Job 33 verse 4. Jump down to verse 7 now. Watch this. Second Ezra, chapter 3, verse 7. And unto him thou gavest commandment to love thy way, which he transgressed. You see what was given to Adam? I can hear you. Second Ezra, 3, verse 7. The second book of Ezra, chapter 3, verse 7. And unto him thou gavest commandment to love thy way. So what was given to Adam was what? The commandments. Adam was given the commandments. You understand? Which is the way of the Lord. Read. Read that again, verse 7. Second book of Ezra, chapter 3, verse 7. And unto him mm -hmm. thou gavest commandment to love thy way. Read. Which he transgressed. Mm -hmm. And immediately thou appointest death in him. And in his generations that's us come on of whom came nations tribes people and kindreds out of number 
You see that thing? Because Adam was given the commandments to teach everyone. You understand? Adam was given... What, what, are, what are we going over? We're going over the responsibility that was given to Adam. Adam was given the responsibility to do what? To observe the laws of God, to apply them, you understand? And to teach everyone else to set the whole earth in order and in, in the generations after him. You understand? The direct descendants of Adam, which is us this day. Watch this. Give me the book of Genesis now, chapter 2. You understand? After Adam was given the responsibility to do what? To teach. Adam was given the responsibility to, to name all the animals, to set things in order upon this earth. The whole earth bowed the knee. You understand? Watch this. Give me Genesis 2 verse 18. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. Adam was given an important job to do. You understand? Before the woman was on the scene, before Eve was brought to him, Adam had a very important job to do, to set the whole earth in order. You understand? Give me that in Genesis 2 verse 18. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. And the Lord God said, Read. It is not good that the man should be alone. Read. I will make him and help a meet for him. You see, you see that thing? He says, I will make him and help meet for him. So he says, it is not good that man should be alone. Who is he talking about? He's talking about Adam. You understand? I will make him and help meet for him. You understand? Jump down to verse 20. And Adam gave names to all cattle. All right. Yes, sir. Okay, Genesis, Genesis 2 verse 18. One more again. One more time. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. He says, I will make him and help meet for him. Jump down to verse 20. Verse 20. And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found an help meet for him. So now at this point, Adam was not given, he was not. There was, it says there was not found an help meet for Adam. He says it was not good for him to be alone. Now the Lord is saying, listen, we need to find somebody that is worthy for Adam. You understand? That's, what the, that's what's going on here. You understand? He says, for Adam, there was not found an help meet for him. So the Lord says throughout all the people that he created, he said, there's no one is good enough for Adam. You understand? No one is good enough for Adam. I have to do something different here. Okay, read that again, verse 20. Genesis chapter 2, verse 20. And Adam gave read. names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was no, there was not found and help meet for him. Meaning somebody that can be able, with somebody that was going to be compatible to him. You understand? Somebody that is going to be compatible to him. The Lord said, no, 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 I, get, I have to create something. Somebody, that somebody must come from you. You understand? Adam was so special. You see the sons of God, we are so special. You understand? So much so the Lord said, mm -mm, I cannot get somebody from outside of Adam to be with Adam. I need to pull something. Some, this person must come out of Adam's flesh. So you sisters, you got to look at this and say, hmm, this man right here, this man is a God on this earth. That's how you really need to think about it. You understand? That's how special you are, sisters. You come from gods. Read that again. Verse 20. Some heavy stuff. Genesis chapter 2. Verse 20. And Adam gave okay. names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air mm -hmm. and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, really? there was not found and help meet for him. There was not found and help meet for him. Watch this. Jump down to verse 22. Verse 22. And the rib mm -hmm. which the Lord God had taken from you know man. What? Start at verse 21. Start at verse 21 down. Okay. Genesis chapter 2 verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. You see that thing? So the Lord caused a deep sleep, literally a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept. 
So when that when that happened, the Lord said, mm, it's time for me now to make and help meat. Meat meaning good for him. And help that is going to be good for this man. You see that thing? Read on. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Read verse 22 again. Genesis chapter 2 verse 22. And the rib mm -hmm. which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. You see what the Lord did? He used the rib from Adam and created the woman. It says, made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Eve was not supposed, was not created to be by herself. You understand? The black woman was not created to be by herself. Think about it. Just, oof, that's some heavy stuff right here. Watch this. Hold this. Give me the book of Tobit. Tobit. Tobit chapter 7. I want to show you something. Some heavy stuff right here. Oh, some heavy stuff right here. Toby chapter 7. Let's start at verse... Hmm. You know what? Toby, just start at verse 13. Let's get to the point. Toby chapter 7 verse 13. Watch this. Toby chapter 7 verse 13. Then he mm -hmm. called his daughter Sarah. Read. And she came to her father. And he took he her... What? And she came to her father. She came to her father. Read on. And he took her by the hand. Mm -hmm. And gave her to be wife to Tobias. She, he did what? And gave her to be wife to Tobias. So now, what you want to notice here says, then called, this says, then he called his daughter Sarah. Okay, this is the father now. And she came to her father. And he took her by the hand and gave her to be wife to Tobias. Keep reading. Go ahead. And gave her to be wife to Tobias, saying, Behold, mm -hmm. take her after the law of Moses and lead her away to thy father. And he blessed him. So now, what you want to notice here is Eve from the father to the husband. You see that there's no one in between here. From the most High like God forming Eve out of Adam's rib directly to Adam. That's some heavy stuff right there. Meaning what? From the father's house to the husband's house. That is what we just read in Genesis 2. Genesis 2 verse 22. Read that again. Read that again verse 13. Toby chapter 7 verse 13. Go then ahead. he's called his, dead, his daughter Sarah. And Come on. she came to her father. And he took her by the hand and gave her to be wife to Tobias. Um, let's try this again. Let's try this one more again. Read that again, verse 13. Toby chapter 7, verse 13. Then he called his daughter Sarah. And she came unto her father. And he took her by the hand. And gave her to be wife to Tobias. Read. Saying, Behold, take her after the law of Moses. And lead her away to thy father. And he blessed him. Okay, let's try this again. Tobit 7 verse 13. The book of Tobit chapter 7 verse 13. Then he called his daughter Sarah. And she came to her father. And he took her by the hand and gave her to be wife to Tobias, saying, Read. Behold, take her after the law of Moses and lead her away to thy father. And he blessed him. So now, he, this is the father now. He's blessing this marriage going on. That's what the Most High God did when, he, when, when, the, Lord created, when he, the Lord created Eve out of Adam's rib. The Lord blessed them. Because what did the Lord do? The Lord brought Eve unto Adam. The same way Sarah's father, what, what happened? Sarah's father brought Sarah to, to, to the husband. You understand? To her husband. That's some heavy stuff right here. Go back to where was it now? Genesis 2, verse 22 again. Beautiful stuff Genesis, right here. Genesis 2, verse 22. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from men 
may he a woman and brought her unto the man you see that thing made he a woman and brought her unto the man so there's no independence you understand because from the father's house you go to the husband's house that's exactly what happened that's what we are reading here the example is what we read in the book of Tobit. you understand from the father to the husband that's what happened to eve there's no independence because where does independence come in the independent comes in when you live from your father's house then to the boyfriend then to the world then you become spoiled then when you are tired you understand then you go to the to the to the husband that's how Esau's. that's the system of Esau. this is Esau's system but what we're reading here this is god's program right here you understand read on verse 23 and Adam said, The says now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. You see that thing? She, was, she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. So now, what we are reading here, it says the first thing that Adam was given, Adam was given responsibility. The second thing was, now that Adam knew, okay, I understand, I know the laws now, and now I have a Watch this, watch this, watch this. Jump up. Read verse 19 real quick. Genesis 2 verse 19. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 19. Mm -hmm. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air Read. and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And Come whatsoever on. Adam called, every living creature that name that was the name thereof so now what was given to adam remember adam was given the commandments next thing that adam was given adam was given a job you see that thing adam was given the commandments and adam was given a job adam was given a job to do you understand he wasn't just sitting there just playing with electrons he wasn't sitting there just playing with atoms no no adam was given what he was given a job not only was he given the commandments, but he was given a job. Then after he was given a job, read verse 23 again now. The book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 23. Read. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones mm -hmm. and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. You see that thing? Because she was taken out of man. So after Adam was given responsibility and a job, then it was time for Adam to be married. You see that thing? Watch this. Give me the book of Tobit, chapter 8, verse 6. Give me Tobit 8, verse 6. The book of Tobit, chapter 8, verse 6. Read. Thou madest Adam and gavest him Eve, his wife, for an helper and stay. Read. Of them came mankind. Mm -hmm. That was said, it is not good that man should be alone. Let us make unto him an aid like unto himself. Read verse 8. We read verse 6 again. One more again. The book of Tobit chapter 8 verse 6. Read. Thou madest Adam and gavest him Eve, his wife, for an help and stay. Stop right there. Of this says, thou madest Adam and gavest him Eve, his wife, for an helper and stay. So Adam was given the laws, Adam was given a job, then Adam was given a wife. You understand? Adam was given a wife. That's what we're reading here. For an helper and stay. Of them came mankind. Thou hast said, it is not good that man should be alone. Let us make unto him an aid like unto himself. You understand? So the most high God does things in order. There's no haphazard, hap, hap, he's not haphazard with the most high. Everything must be done decently and in order. And that's what you are seeing here with Adam. That's the right example that the Lord is setting before us. Before you get married, you must know how to be a man. You understand? You must understand the commandments of the most. That's the order that God gave to the man, the black man. You understand? The commandments, a job, those are, those are responsibilities. You understand? Then, when the wife comes in, you know how to take care of business. Okay, watch this. Give me... Um, go back to where was it? Genesis 2. Okay, Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. 
the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Remember, Adam at this point, before Eve came on the scene, Adam was a god on earth. You understand? Adam had responsibility. He had responsibilities to take care of. You understand? To do the things that the Lord commanded him to do. Okay? Now, what you want to notice here is a read verse 24 again. Read verse 24 one more, once again. The book of Genesis of 2 verse 24. Read. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother mm -hmm. and shall cleave unto his wife and they Come shall on. be one flesh. You see, I think they shall be one. The two shall be one flesh. Now watch this. Give me 1 Corinthians 14, 33. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 33. Remember, when Eve was taken out of Adam, Eve didn't know anything. You understand? Now Eve is being taken to, Eve is given, is given to Adam so that Adam can do what? Can teach this woman. Eve, that, so that Adam can guide this woman. You understand? And build her up. Okay? That's, that's the third responsibility that was given to Adam. The first was what? The commandments. The second was a job. The third was a wife. You see that? Watch this. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 33. Let's start there. First book of Corinthians, chapter 14, verse 33. Mm -hmm. For God is not the author of confusion. God is not the author of confusion. Okay? What we just read in Genesis 2, that was not confusion. That was order. That was God's divine order and purpose. Read that part again. First book of Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. For Read. God is not the author of confusion, mm -hmm. but of peace in all the churches of the saints. As in, as in all the churches of the saints. You understand? God was not, God is, the most is not the author of confusion. God deals with order. That's why we knew, when you, when, when, what we just went over, that's the order of the most high. You understand? Next verse. Watch this. The Lord is not the author of confusion because he didn't bring the wife before Adam got a job. He didn't bring the wife before Adam could understand how to keep the commandments. It wasn't like that. Adam was given the commandments. He was given a job. Then when Adam had those things in lock, then only then the wife was brought to Adam. That's the order of the Most High. Read on. Verse 35. No, verse 34. Let your woman keep silence in the churches. Mm -hmm. Come on. For, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. Read. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also said the law. So what you want to notice with this verse, it says, let your women keep silence in the churches. The first church begins in your house. But guess what? Adam and Eve, that was the church. That was the church right there. That was the church. It began in the house. You understand? Read that again. Verse 34. First book of Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34. Let Read. your woman keep silence in the churches. Mm -hmm. For it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. So what you are reading here says, he says, they must what? They must what? They must keep silence in the churches. Because Adam and Eve, that family, that marriage, that was the church. You understand? That was the church right there. So when it says, keep silence in the churches, because Adam's, uh, Eve's job was to do what? Was to learn. Because she didn't know anything. Now she's brought to Adam, so Adam can educate her. You understand? And build her up. That's the point. Okay? It is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience to who? Their husband, as also saith the law. Watch this. Hmm. Give me the book. Give me the book of Ephesians. All right. Give me Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5. Let me see if I want to go to Ephesians first. Yeah, let's go there first. Ephesians 5.22. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 22. Really? Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. You see that thing? He says, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. 
Because guess what? Eve was Adam's wife. Her job was to submit herself to Adam, you understand, was submit herself completely to her Lord. You understand? Read on. Okay, read that again. Ephesians 5, start of verse 22 again. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. So that's the commandment. Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. These are the things that Adam was teaching Eve. You understand? Adam was teaching Eve how to conduct herself based on what everything that Adam knows is the things that now Adam was teaching Eve. That was the responsibility that was given to Adam when Eve was introduced to him. Okay? Come on. For the husband is the head of the wife. So Adam is the head, was the head of Eve. Adam is, he is the head of Eve. You understand? He is the leader. Okay, come on. Even as Christ is the head of the church. Read. And he is the savior of the body. You see that thing? He is the savior of the body. Hmm. Keep reading. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, mm -hmm. so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. That's some heavy stuff right there. So therefore, as it says, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ. Remember, Adam and Eve, that was the church. Okay? Even as Christ is the head of the church, he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So when Eve was brought to Adam, she didn't know anything. She, her job was to submit to Adam in everything. Everything, not something, no, everything. Her job is to submit to Adam in everything. Why? Because Adam, he knew everything. Adam knew everything. Her job was to submit to Adam in everything so she can learn. You understand? The Lord made sure taught Adam the commandments. You understand? Gave Adam a job. Then the, the wife was brought to Adam. So that Eve, Eve was not created so that she can be separate from Adam. She come from Adam. She was created literally out of Adam. You understand? That's why it says the two shall be one. That's why it says this is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Because she comes from me. Literally. Okay, watch this. Jump up. Jump to read verse 20. Mm, that's it on that. Go back to where was that now? No, no, jump to verse 31. Read verse 31. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31. Mm -hmm. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. They too shall be one flesh, shall be one flesh, just like what Adam said in Genesis 2. Go ahead, verse 32. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. You see that thing? It says, this is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Man, this is some heavy stuff right here. What we're reading in Genesis and what we're reading here mm, are the most high. All praise to the most high this day. Read verse 32 again. Ephesians chapter 5, chapter 5, verse 32. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Read on verse 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. Mm -hmm. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. So now the question is, you see that part when it says, nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. So did Adam love himself? Yes. Adam loved himself. He kept the commandments of the Mosa. He loved himself. He knew how to he knew how to what? How to preserve himself. He knew how to conduct himself. He knew how to serve the Lord. He knew how to what? To be, to live forever. He knew how to do that. So he loved himself. Enough to obey that which was commanded of him. You understand? So that's why it says, nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. Because before you can love somebody else, you need to know how to love yourself. That's why it's important for you to get your mind right. You understand? Very important to get yourself together before you can even talk about getting a wife or a husband. 
you must get your mind right so you learn how to love yourself just as the scripture says you understand particular soul love his wife even as himself because how are you going to do that if you're already with somebody else and you are figuring things out that's not easy okay but you brothers you sisters you have an opportunity to do what to actually learn apply the scriptures how to love yourself then when somebody comes in you know how to love them because you already know how to do it already you have an experience of doing that you understand read that part again verse 33 ephesians chapter 5 verse 33 read nevertheless let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself mm -hmm. and the wife see that she reverence her husband she submits completely to her husband she honors him okay watch this go back to where was that now first corinthians chapter 14 read verse 35 now again you know i start of verse 34 read verse 34 then 35 First Corinthians chapter 5, chapter 14, verse 34. Mm -hmm. Let your women keep silence in the churches. Read. For it is not permitted unto them to speak. Come on. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. You see that thing? They are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. Watch this. Now, give me, hold this. Give me Genesis 3. Mm, I didn't want to go there now. You know what? Hmm. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Give me one second. I want to go there right now. Uh, let me just go there. Excuse me. Genesis 3, 16. Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. Mm -hmm. And to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee. So now, what the Apostle Paul is talking about when he says, as also saith the law, is talking about this right here. You understand? He says, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow, meaning what? Child labor pains. Okay? And thy conception, when they give birth and all of that, that goes into their menstrual cycles and all that. When they're having their menstrual, when they're on their menstruals, you're going to experience great pain. Why? Because of disobedience. Read that again, verse 16. Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. And to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy mm -hmm. desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Your desire shall be to your husband, and he, your husband, shall rule over thee. So when he says they must be in subjection to their husbands in everything, that goes into what? their desire to learn, their desire for sex, their desire, anything and everything they need, they must go, they must, their desire must be to their husband. That's the law. You understand? Now go back to 1 Corinthians 15, 14, verse 35 now. Because that's the reason why Aram, I mean Eve, was brought to Aram. When she was brought to Aram, she didn't know anything. So Aram's job was to teach this woman. You understand? So her desire is to be is to her husband so that the husband can teach her anything that she wants to know she will go to him you understand read that meaning what what does that mean this means that aram was the power source you understand that gave life to uh, to eve he was the power source think about it because remember what was given to aram Ar go back give me just genesis 2 verse 7 Let's see what was given to Adam. Okay. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Read. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Come on. And man became a living soul. That's some heavy stuff right there. So Adam was breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Eve was taken out of who? Out of Adam. Genesis 2. Okay. Genesis chapter 2 and verse... 22. Read that. Genesis chapter 2, verse 22. Read. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. You see that thing? Made he a woman out of Aram and brought her unto the man. So Aram is the power source. Aram's power source is the Mosai. 
The woman's power source is the man. So now if you are cut off from the power source, what happens to you? You drop dead. You have no power no more if you are disconnected from your power source. You understand? So what we are reading here is what? We are seeing how Eve is completely connected and dependent on Adam. And Adam is completely dependent on the Lord. That's how this whole, that's how the Lord set this thing up. You understand? Watch this. Give me, go back to 1 Corinthians now. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 35 now. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 35. Uh huh. And if they will learn anything, Read. Let, let them ask their husbands at home. Mm hmm. For it is a shame for women to speak in the church. Meaning what? When it says it is a shame for them to speak, what is this talking about? He's not saying they cannot talk. He's talking about usurping authority over the man because their job is to learn from this man. Their job is to learn from the black man. It's not to be over the black man. That's what the Apostle Paul is explaining. Because their desire to learn, you understand? Sex and all of that stuff. Anything that they desire, they, it must be to their husbands. Because that's the power source. The husband is a transformer. For those of you that have done electricity some point in high school, he's the transformer. You understand? He's got that power. So now our job is to do what? Is to build the sisters up. But before we can build the sisters up, we must be built up. Because when you now, be, the two of you join together as one, you as the man, you need to be able to educate this woman just as Aram educated Eve until she went off. That's the response. That's the job. You understand? So you sisters, you are 100% connected to the black man. 100. Not 99. 100% mm -mm. you are connected and dependent on the black man. That's how the law set it up. And we, the sons of Adam, we are 100% dependent on the Mosai. We are dependent on the Lord. The Lord is dependent on the Most High God. You see that thing? So there's no, I'm an individual. I'm an individual light. I'm going to do my own thing. That's not in the Bible. Because once you do your own thing, you, are, you disconnect yourself from the power source. And that's exactly what has happened to the black woman this day. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Genesis 3, verse 1. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Come on. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? You read that again, verse 1? Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Mm -hmm. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So now, the serpent here, the serpent, is as a serpent, he was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. So this serpent here, give me that in, um, give me, give me, let's deal with the beast first and foremost. Before we deal with the, with the serpent, let's deal with the beast. He says, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. This serpent is the beast. Okay, give me that in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 18. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 18. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 18. I said in mine heart concerning the estate of the sons of men, that God might manifest them, and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. Read that again. Because you are distracted. There's something you are doing in the background. Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 18. Come on. I said in mine heart concerning the estates of the sons of men. That God might manifest them. And that they may, might see that they themselves are beasts. You see that thing? It says that they might see that they themselves are beasts. So the serpent is the beast. But he's making reference to what? To man. He's not talking about a snake. He's talking about man. So go back to Genesis 3 now. Verse 1 again. Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. 
Mm-hmm. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. So now this serpent is the beast which represents man. This serpent is the beast which represents man. He says he was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. So when he says any any beast of the field, he's talking about the nations that the Lord created during the time of Genesis 1. Okay, come on. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So now the serpent is asking the woman now. The serpent goes to the woman and asks the questions. Hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Go ahead. Verse 2. Verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruits of the trees of the garden. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Read verse 2 again. Genesis chapter 3 verse 2. Mm-hmm. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. So now the question you must ask you is, how did Eve know to say what she's saying in verse 2? It's because Adam was teaching Eve. Her desire was to her husband at this point, was still to her husband. That's why she was able to know this, to have this information. How did she receive it? Adam gave her the information. He says, and the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. How did she know that? Because Adam was teaching this woman. You understand? So she was, what was she doing? She was rightly dividing the word of truth at this point. She understood. She had understanding. Okay. Read on. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God Mm. had said, ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. How did she know this? Because Eve, because Aram taught his wife. Watch this. Go back to 1 Corinthians 14, verse 35. Again. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 35. Mm-hmm. And they will, and if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame for women to speak in the church. You see what he's saying? So it says, if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. Because Eve, she knew that she had, see, she's got a head over her. She understood the order. She understood her role in the order that the Lord has set up. So now go back to Genesis 3, verse 4 again. No, verse 3 again. Genesis chapter 3, verse 3. Mm-hmm. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So now she's telling the serpent, listen, this tree right here, I'm not supposed to touch this one. But the trees in verse, the fruit of the trees in verse 2 is talking about literal trees. This one right here in verse 3 is not talking about that. Watch this. Give me Hosea 10 verse 13 real quick. Hosea chapter 10 verse 13. Hosea chapter 10 verse 13. Mm-hmm. Ye have plowed wickedness, ye have reaped iniquity, ye have eaten of the fruit of lies. Read. Because thou didst trust in thy way, in the multitude of thy mighty men. That's the serpent. Read that again, verse 13. Hosea chapter 10 verse 13. Mm-hmm. Ye have plowed wickedness, ye have reaped iniquity. Ye have eaten of the fruit of lies. Ye have eaten the fruit of lies, because thou didst trust in thy way, in the multitude of thy mighty men. So what you are seeing here is that the fruit that is made, being referenced in Genesis 3 verse 3 is talking about the fruit of lies that the serpent is going to dish out to our foremother Eve. You understand? Because she was what? She started to become curious in unnecessary matters. Watch this. Give me... Give me the book of uh, Ecclesiasticus, okay? Give me Ecclesiasticus chapter 3. Sirach 3. Let me see. Mm-hmm. Ecclesiasticus chapter 3 and verse 21. Ecclesiasticus chapter 3 verse 21. Mm-hmm. Seek not out things that are too hard for thee, neither search the things that are above thy strength. 
You see that thing? Don't search out the things that are above your strength. Read on. But what is commanded thee? Mm -hmm. Think thereupon with reverence. For it is not needful for thee to see with thine eyes the things that are in secret. That's some heavy stuff right there. He says, for it is not needful, it's not necessary for you to see, to see with thine eyes the things that are in secret. Guess what? This is where Eve, Eve wanted to do that. She wanted to see with her eyes the things that are in secret. And the serpent was able to pick that up in her spirit. Read on. Be not curious in unnecessary matters. Read. For more things are showed unto thee than men understand. You see that thing right there? Now go back to where he was at now. Genesis 3 verse 3 again. Genesis chapter 3 verse 3. Mm -hmm. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. You see that thing? Now Eve is explaining to the serpent what's going on here. Watch what the serpent says now. Come on. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. You see what the serpent is doing now? The serpent is testing now if Eve is going to what is going to hold fast to what she has learned from Adam, or she's gonna go off as the serpent can pick up in her spirit. Read on. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You see that thing? It says, God doth know in the day ye eat thereof, meaning you learn of this, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Watch this. Go back to Sirach 3. Go back to Sirach chapter 3, read verse 22 again. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 22. Mm -hmm. But what is commanded thee? Think thereupon with reverence. For it is not needful for thee to see with thine eyes the things that are in secret. You see that thing? It's not necessary for you to see with thine eyes the things that are in secret. So what, you see what the serpent is doing? Go back to Genesis 3 verse 5. Genesis 3 verse 5. Mm -hmm. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You see what he's saying? Your eyes, your eyes, because guess what? That is the spirit that was running within Eve. She wanted to see with her eyes the things that are in secret. You understand? So what you are seeing here is that the serpent basically is implying that Adam is hiding things from you. So what, he, what is the serpent planting? What is this white man planting in the mind of the black woman? He is planting doubt. You see that? He is planting doubt in her mind. The spirit of disbelief, the spirit of unbelief. You see that? That's some heavy stuff right there. You understand? Hmm. We're going to deal with that just for a second. Keep reading. Read verse 6. We're going to come back to verse 5. Read verse 6. Verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. You see that part right there? When she saw that the tree was good for food. Read. And that it was pleasant to the eyes. Mm -hmm. She and a tree to be desired to make one wise. Come on. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. You see what we're we see what we're seeing right here? And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. But what I want to show you here is this. Give me that in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 19. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, meaning what? Good for knowledge. And it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. So this tree that was desired to make one wise, remember what it says in Genesis 3.16, it says your desire shall be to your husband and he shall rule over thee. Eve's desire was no more to her husband anymore. You see that thing? He says, her desire shall be to her husband. She said, no, I don't want that. I don't want my desire to be to my husband anymore. You see that thing? Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 19. 
Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 19. Mm -hmm. And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun, and the moon, and the stars, even all the hosts of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them, and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under, under the whole heaven. So now what you are seeing here says, Lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven. When thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, these this is what that's what we are reading here in Genesis 3, verse 6. Okay. Even the host of heaven should be driven to worship them and serve them. That is what the serpent brought to Eve. You understand? Idolatry. Her desire was no longer to her husband. But her desire was to what? Was to the quote-unquote knowledge that came with worshipping idols. Because she also wanted to be wise. Just like Adam above Adam. Okay, go back to where he was at now. Genesis 3 verse 6 again. Genesis chapter 3 verse 6. Mm -hmm. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. And that it was pleasant to the eyes. And the tree to be... And the tree to be desired to make one wise. Rage. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband with her and he did eat. Great. And the eyes of them both were opened. No, 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 that's it. That's it. Why, 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 watch this. Watch this. Give me Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14. Verse 12. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 verse 12. Remember, what the serpent told Eve was that, listen, you're not going to die if you eat this. The fruit is not talking about an apple. It's not, it's not mentioning an apple here. It's talking about knowledge. Knowledge of what? The sun, moon, and stars, which is these are things that when Eve saw and the knowledge that came with that, she said, you know what? I like this. I like when you worship this, it does this. Yes. When you, yes, she liked that. You understand? Read that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14. Verse 12. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 12. Come on. For the devising of idols was the mm. beginning of spiritual fornication. Come on. And the invention of them, the corruption of life. You see that thing? That, the corruption of life. Remember what was breathed into Adam? The breath of life. So the life that was breathed into Adam, that was breathed, that was, that was taught to Eve. Guess what happened? Because Eve also was bred with... The, the Adam breathed into her the breath of life. She, he taught her the commandments. He taught, he taught Eve the commandments. So guess what? The life that was breathed into Eve by Adam now is now being corrupted by what? Idols. Idolatry is what corrupted the mind of the black woman. That's the spoiling right here. That's the spoil. Read that again, verse 12. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 12. Read. For the devising of idols was the mm. beginning of spiritual fornication. Read. And the invention of them, the corruption of life. And the invention of these idols that they've devised was the corruption of life. Because when Eve, she's, she, she says it was beautiful to behold, you know, a tree to be desired to make one wise, Guess what? That was the beginning of the correction, the corruption of the mind of the black woman at this point. You understand? Watch this. Jump down to verse 14. Verse 14. Come on. For by the vain glory of men, they entered into the world. Mm -hmm. And therefore shall they come shortly to an end. You see what he's saying? So the reason why the idols were devised in verse 4 in verse 12 was to what? Was to, towards the vain glory of men. To worship men. To idolize men. You understand? So men can be what? Can be worshipped as gods. So, I mean, you have to really think about it. Did Eve really worship the sun, moon, and stars? No, no, no. She worshipped the source. Where the knowledge regarding the sun, moon, and stars came from. To idolize them. But she wasn't really, she didn't necessarily idolize those things, but she was taught to do what? To idolize the man, the serpent, the white man that brought that knowledge to her. You see that thing? As things to worship. Read that part again, verse 14. 
Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 verse 14 mm -hmm. For by the vain glory of men They entered into the world Come on And therefore shall they come shortly to an end Jump down to verse 27 Verse 27 mm -hmm. For the worshipping of idols Not to be named Is the beginning The cause And the end of all evil You see that part right there For the worshipping of idols Not to be named Meaning not to be served Give me that in Joshua chapter 2. No, Joshua 22. Joshua 22, verse 13, I believe. Joshua chapter 22, verse 13. No, no, and 23, the verse 7. 23, verse 7. Joshua 23, verse 7. Joshua chapter 23, verse 7. Mm -hmm. That ye come not among these nations. These that remain among you, Neither make mention of the name of their gods. Come on. No cause to swear by them. Mm -hmm. Neither serve them. No bow yourselves unto them. You see that thing? When it says, for the worshipping of idols not to be named, it says not to be what? Not to be worshipped. That's why it's neither make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them, nor bow yourselves unto them. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 27. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 27. Read. For the worshipping of idols, not to be named, is the beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil. You see what he's saying? The worshipping of idols, not to, be, not to be served or bowed down to, was the beginning, the beginning, the beginning, Genesis. So the sin that was committed during the time of Genesis was idol worship, idolatry. The cause and the end of all evil. So all the evil that is upon this earth is based on idolatry. Okay? Go back to Genesis now. Chapter 3. Genesis 3, verse 6 again. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree... To be desired to make one wise. You see that thing? So this is what uh, this is what Eve was looking for. She wanted to be equal or above Adam. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, meaning for knowledge. Hmm, that's some heavy stuff. I'm not touching that. And that it was pleasant to the eyes, meaning beautiful to behold. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. So what you are seeing here is that Eve's desire was no longer. Jump down to verse 16. Genesis 3 verse 16. Genesis 3 verse 16. Mm -hmm. And to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Come on. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband. And he shall rule over thee. You see that thing? Your desire shall be to thy husband, and he, your husband, shall rule over thee. But when you jump back up to verse 6, read verse 6 again. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So now remember, in Genesis 3.16, that's what we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34. So what we're reading here is Eve's desire was to be to, to her husband. Now Eve, her attention is shifted now. It says what? A, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. So she took of the fruit and she did eat. She learned of this. You understand? Now watch this. Now I want to show you something. Give me, jump back up to verse 5 now. Read verse 5. Genesis 3 verse 5. Genesis chapter 3 verse 5. Mm -hmm. For God doth know that in the day he eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You see that thing? And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now read verse 5 one more again. Genesis chapter 3 verse 5. Mm -hmm. For God doth know 
that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and, your, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So now let's understand this. Watch this. Give me that in Psalms 82 verse 6. Let's go to Psalms 82 verse 6 because I want to explain verse 5. We want to start. We want to stop here for a second. Psalms 82 verse 6. Psalms 82 verse 6. Psalms chapter 82 verse 6. Read. I have said, ye are gods. Mm -hmm. And all of you are children of the Most High. You see that thing? He says, I have said ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. So this was known that we are the gods of the earth. You understand? We are the gods of the earth. Now watch this. Go back to Genesis 3 now. Verse 5 again. Genesis chapter 3 verse 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods. Knowing good and evil. You shall be as gods because Adam was already on that God level. Adam was already a God on earth. Now the serpent is telling Eve, this white man is telling Eve or the black woman, is as ye shall be as gods. You're going to be on your, on, your, on your husband's level or above your husband's level. Equal or above. Knowing good and evil. That's the part I want to stop at. Knowing good and evil. You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Read verse 5 again. Genesis chapter 3 verse 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Knowing good and evil. Knowing good and evil. So what, what, what the serpent convinced Eve was that, listen, you're going to be equal or above your husband, and you're going to know good and evil. Right from wrong. I'm going to teach you all of that stuff. Watch this. Now, what I want to show you now is this. Let's go to hmm, knowing good and evil. Give me Sarah 36, 24. Ecclesiasticus 36, verse 24. Okay. Ecclesiasticus 36, verse 24. He that gets it the wife beginneth the position. Mm -hmm. a help like unto himself and a pillow of rest. You see that thing? He that gets the wife, you begin in the possession. Okay, come on. We explained this already in the previous class. Next verse. This is the part I want. With no hedges, there the possession is spoiled. Mm -hmm. And he that hath no, no wife will wander up and down mourning. So now watch this. It says, where no hedge is, there the possession is spoiled. Now, Go back to Genesis 3 verse 5 again. Where there's no hedge, the position gets spoiled. That is the plight of the black woman today. The independent black woman. Okay? Genesis 3 verse 5. Genesis chapter 3 verse 5. Mm -hmm. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now watch this. Remember what the, the, give me that in 2 Corinthians, because I keep saying the white man. Let's explain who this serpent is. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Let's start at verse 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 2. Mm -hmm. For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. Read. For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So now the Apostle Paul is talking to the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? Because when he says, I'm jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that's Christ, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Meaning what? We must be chaste. We must be disciplined in God's commandments. Okay, come on, verse 3. But I fear, lest by any means... As the serpent beguiled Eve through his mm -hmm. subtlety. Come on. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that, that is in Christ. So now the Apostle Paul is going to explain to us the serpent that beguiled Eve in Genesis 3 verse 5 down. Go ahead. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached. Read. Or, or if he receive another spirit, whom which ye have not received, 
or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with them. So the Apostle Paul is explaining to us that the serpent that beguiled Eve through his subtlety is is what? Is the is is the same person, the same man that will what that will come unto us and preach unto us another Jesus, whom the apostles never preached, so that we can receive another spirit which we have never received, or and teach another gospel which we have not accepted. He says, we will bear with him in the scriptures. So which man came and gave us another Jesus? The white man did that. You understand? And gave us another gospel. The white man did that. Christianity is another gospel. It's not even a gospel. It's a philosophy. You understand? And it comes with a different spirit. Because white Jesus comes with his own spirit and a specific doctrine. To keep you away from the laws of God. That's the whole point of this. So the serpent that began Eve is the white man. Now let's go back to Genesis 3. Okay, Genesis 3 verse 5. Again. Genesis 3 verse 5. For God doth know that in the day he eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You shall be as gods. So this white man said to the black woman, listen, you're going to be as a god. You're going to be equal or above your husband because Adam was already on that God level. He says, knowing good and evil, meaning what? You're going to be able to decide whatever you want. Don't nobody going to tell you nothing because you are a God now. You understand? People must worship and bow down to you now. You don't got to listen to your husband. You don't have to hear nothing that Adam has to say. You can just make decision on your own because guess what? You have the knowledge of good and evil. You are wise now. Okay, watch this. Let's go to... Mm. Yes. Let me share my screen. Okay. I need you to read this. I need you to read what you are seeing on the screen. This feminist movement. Read that. Feminist movement on Wikipedia. Mm. The feminist movement, also known as the women's movement, or simply feminism, refers to a series of political campaigns for reforms on issues such as reproductive rights, Stop right domestic there. violence. Reproductive rights. That goes into what? Abortions. So the feminist movement, one of the least of the feminist movement was what? Reproductive rights. Abortions. Deciding whether I want the baby or not. And I can make that decision on my own. That's why it says knowing good and evil. I can make that decision on my own. I can take life or I can preserve it. Because guess what? I'm also on that God level. And more so above the, the status that Adam was given. That's what the serpent did to the black woman. You understand? Read that part again. Reading from Wikipedia. Yes, sir. Feminist movement. The feminist movement, also known as the women's movement, or simply mm -hmm. feminism. So the feminist movement was the women's movement. Okay, come on. Refers to a series of political campaigns for reforms on social issues, such no, as... No, 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 not social issues, on issues... For reforms on issues such as reproductive rights... Reproductive rights, come on. Domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Maternity leave. Read. Equal pay. Come on. Women's suffrage. suffrage. Women's suffrage. Okay, go ahead. Women's suffrage, mm -hmm. sexual harassment, and sexual violence. Come on, keep reading. Watch this. The movement prioritizes very... The, the woman's... No, no. The, the women's the movement's priorities vary among nations and communities. Come on. The movements the movement's priorities vary among nations and communities and range mm -hmm. from opposition to female genital mutilation in one Come country on. uh -huh. to opposition to the glass ceiling in another. 
in another meaning in another country. Now watch this. Look at this picture right here. This is not a black woman. This is a white woman. It says, we can do it. This is a white woman right here. Read the, 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 the caption at the bottom. The we can do it war propaganda poster from 1943 was reappropriated as a symbol of the feminist movement in the 1980s. So this thing started from the 1940s, 1940s, 1943. You understand? Go ahead. Feminism in parts of the Western world has gone through a series of waves. So now this feminism First wave, comes from, hold on, wait, wait. The feminism is a Western world culture, is a Western culture. And who perpetrated the feminism movement? The white woman. You understand? Go ahead. Feminism in, in parts of the Western world has gone through a series of waves. Mm -hmm. First wave feminism was orient, oriented around the station of middle or upper class white woman mm. and involved suffrage and political equality. So now the, the feminism or the feminist movement is a white woman's problem regarding her white men. We got, the black woman has nothing to do with the feminist movement. Not absolutely nothing to do with it. But in Genesis 3, that was the beginning of it right there. The beginning of the feminist movement. So the white woman just reintroduced the feminist movement in the 1940s and it picked up in the 1980s. But the white man is the one that started the feminist movement in the garden. Knowing good and evil, right? Keep going. Second wave feminism attempted to further combat social and cultural inequalities. Meaning what? Among white women. You understand? Remember, this is a white woman's problem regarding her white man. Keep going. Although the first wave of feminism involved mainly middle-class white women, mm -hmm. the second wave brought in women of color mm. and women from other developing nations that were seeking solidarity. You see that thing? Meaning what? The women from developing, the, when it says developing, other developing nations, listen, they didn't have that. The first wave is the one that sent way. The first wave is what was the reason why the second wave happened because, and the second wave involved the, the, the black woman. Now she became part of this. She's supporting the white woman in wanting to fight for equal rights with her white man. But nonetheless, she's still behind her white man. Now the black woman now has joined a fight that don't belong to her. Now, by so doing, she separated herself from the black man. You see how that works? Knowing good and evil, huh? Read that part again. The first wave feminism, first no, no. wave feminism was... Se second wave, second wave. Second wave feminism attempted to further combat social and cultural inequalities. Mm -hmm. Although the first wave of feminism involved mainly middle-class white woman, the second wave brought in women of color and women from other developing nations that were seeking solidarity. Because if you look at the Arab world and all of that, the women, they subject themselves to their men. But today, they don't do that. They don't do that. It's only those that are in the so-called Middle East that are still doing that. But here, when they come to South Africa, they go to China, they go to Europe, they go to America, guess what? They adopt 100% the culture of the white woman. Okay? The one that has gone overboard is the black woman. Keep going. Third wave feminism is continuing to address the financial, social, and cultural inequalities and includes renewed campaigns for greater influence of women in politics and media. You see that thing? So now that this third wave, remember, this is, whose problem is this? This is the white woman's problem. The black woman has joined the white woman's problem to fight for the white woman's position in the, the white male dominated world. You understand? Okay, keep going. 
In reaction to political activism, feminists have also had to maintain focus on women's reproductive rights, uh -huh. such as the right to abortion. This whole this whole thing was to lead to this point, this point right here. Because the white women don't be doing that, don't be aborting their babies, they don't do that. The Indians, the Chinese, they don't be doing that. It's only the black woman that is pushing this thing. So this whole, this whole drama, this whole blah, 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 it was only to lead to this point right here. To get the black woman to sympathize with the white woman in return for the black woman to kill her own children and the white woman preserve hers. You can make this stuff up, okay? It says such as what? It says feminists have also had to maintain focus. They had to maintain focus on women's reproductive rights, such as the right to abortion. Now, that's heavy right there. The right to abortion, right? Hmm. Yes. The part I want to do to read here is this one. Hmm. Start from women's movement. The women's movement affected change. Read that part. The women's movement affected change in Western society, including women's suffrage, the right to initiate divorce proceedings, and no fault divorce. Mm -hmm. The right of women to make individual decisions regarding pregnancy, mm. including access to contraceptives and abortion. Come on. And the right to own property. That's just blah, 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 blah. The key you want to extract out of this is that, read the whole paragraph again. I need you men to pay attention here. The women's movement affected change in a Western society, including women's suffrage, the right to initiate divorce proceedings and no fault divorce. Mm -hmm. The, the right of women to make individual decisions regarding pregnancy, including access to contraceptives and abortion, and the right to own property. So now, what you want to take out of this paragraph is what? The right of, the right of women to make individual decisions regarding pregnancy, including access to contraceptives and abortion. So, wait a minute. Who's leading the charge in who's leading the charge in abortion? The black woman. You guessed it. Okay. So the white woman, this feminist movement, it was not for her to kill her own babies. No. This whole plot was designed to get the black woman into this the feminist movement, eventually to do what? To do what we are. This paragraph right here is the whole point of the feminist movement. The feminist movement is about killing black babies. That's what the feminist movement is about. The feminist movement is against life. They kill babies, they become lesbians and gays. That's what the Black Lives Matter is about. That's what the LGBTQ community is about. It's about killing the black men and the black, the, the black men and the black women, the sons and our sons and our daughters. That's the reason why these movements exist, is the target is our sons and daughters. You understand? Now, Genesis 3 verse 5 again. The book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 5. Mm -hmm. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods, no uh -huh. good and evil. Ye shall be as gods. Meaning you are a god. You can just kill or preserve life. Read that paragraph again. The book of Genesis. No, no. The paragraph. The paragraph on Wikipedia. Read that again. Yes, sir. The women's movement affected change in Western society, including women's suffrage, the right to initiate divorce proceedings, and no fault divorce, mm -hmm. the right of women to make individual decisions regarding pregnancy, including access to contraceptives and abortion. Now, watch the right this. to own property. You see that part when it says individual decisions regarding pregnancy, including access to contraceptives. Who's given access to contraceptives? It's our sisters. Our sisters have, have, have been given access to contra contraceptives 
you can get them off the counter. Contraceptives are available everywhere now. You just go to clicks, you get one. I want a contraceptive. There is no doctor signature. The doctor don't need to sign nothing. You can just get it over the counter. Okay. Now, the sisters today, they are using abortion as a form of what? Birth control. Contraceptives. They are not taking pills. No, no. They are just outright just killing the babies like that. They fall pregnant, then they kill the baby. That's how it's done. You understand? Watch this. Read that part when it says, in 1918, let's start there. In 1918, Crystal Eastman wrote an article published in the Birth Control Review. Mm -hmm. She contended that birth control is a fundamental right for women mm. and must be available as an alternative if they are to participate fully in the modern world. You can make this stuff up. That's some heavy stuff right there. Read it again. Read it again. In 1918, Crystal Eastman wrote an article published in the Birth Control Review. She contended that birth control is a fundamental right for women and must be available as an alternative if they are to participate fully in the modern world. So you see that part right there when it says, it says she contended, meaning she fought, that birth control is a fundamental right. You know what it means, fundamental right? When it says fundamental right, that means what? Go back to Genesis 3 verse 5. Because I don't see, I know some of you, you are slow. You don't see what's going on here. Genesis 3 verse 5 again. The book of Genesis really? 3 verse 5. Mm -hmm. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. He says, you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Because the, what, when he says the fundamental right, the fundamental right means you, have, you are a god. You can kill, you can preserve. That's why it says the fundamental right for women and must be available as an alternative if they are to participate fully in the modern world. You ever hear this thing when sisters saying, um... I'm going to have an abortion because I'm not ready to be a mother. You know, I'm and now my, you know, um, tohana, like, you know, is going to disturb me. Now I'm not going to be able to live my life. Isn't that what we're reading here? That's what we're reading. That's what the feminist movement is about. You understand? Po the feminist movement is about population control. Which population are they trying to control? The nation of Israel. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Lamentations 4. Mm. You can make this stuff up. Okay. Lamentations chapter 4. Lamentations 4. Let's start at verse. The book of Lamentations chapter 4 verse 3. Come on. Even the sea monsters draw out the breast. Uh -huh. They give suck to the young ones. The daughter of my people is become cruel. Like the ostriches in the wilderness. You see that thing? It says, even the sea monster draw out their, their breast. And they give suck to their young. When they take care of their children. The daughter of my people has become cruel. Like the ostriches in the wilderness. Just bury the head in the sand. Bury your head in, a, in, in the abortion clinic. Bury your head. It clicks to get contraceptives. Because you have a fundamental right. If to kill. If you want to live fully. If you want to participate, participate fully in this modern world. That's the feminist movement. You understand? That's why they have different waves. There's the first wave, the second, the third wave. But they were all leading up to what? What we are reading right now. You understand? Okay. Read, read the paragraph again. In 1918, Crystal... In 1918, Crystal Eastman wrote an article published in the Birth Control Review. She contended that birth control is a fundamental right for women and must be available as, a, uh, as an alternative if they are to participate fully in the modern world. Right. Quoting, in short, femi if feminism, co conscious and bold and intelligent, leads the demand it will be supported by the secret eagerness 
of all women to control the size of their families. Hold on. It says, okay, let me read this paragraph. It says, in short, unquote, if feminism conscious and bold and intelligent leads the demand, feminism is going to lead the demand, it will be supported by the secret eagerness. You see that part, that uh, secret eagerness? Because how do they make sure that this eagerness, because it is secret, but how do they make sure that it remains secret, meaning it's not known? The reason, the true reason, the real reason behind feminism is not is not made available to the dumb black woman who, who just wants to be separated from a black man. It says the secret eagerness is what? I want to wear a pencil skirt. I want to be in corporate. I want to be the boss. That's the mindset. You understand? Because if she's in that position, that's why the black woman, she gets paid more than the black man. She's given high positions to, to look at the black man as nothing. Okay? You see that part when it says, um, it will be supported by the secret eagerness of all women to control the size of their family. So the women, they're the ones that are going to decide whether to have children or not. And guess what? It's happening now. That's why today, if you watch, if you watch movies, you, you'll be seeing a, a, a couple, right? A couple, they'll be asking them questions. How many children do you want? And the husband will be saying, no, ask the wife how many she wants. That's the feminist movement. She's the one that decides how many children she wants. Not the husband. Not the father. Mm -mm. She's the one that decides that now. Because guess what? It's my body. You know, I decide how many kids I want to carry. You don't carry children. You see that thing? That's the mindset. And a and, and, and Negro, you understand? The brother that is dumb, the brother that is simple as hell, don't see what's going on. He, yeah, but you're right. You know, I, yeah, you know, I can't even begin to imagine what you go through. Listen, the man is the one that decides how many children we're going to have. Because the woman don't carry the seed. The wife, the, 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 the woman don't carry, the, the husband carries the seed. Yes, so who decides whether there should be a child or not? The husband does. The man does. He carries the seed. But no, 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 no. The feminist movement says the wife, the woman is the one that decides. That's why she has a fundamental right. How many kids she can carry, how many she can kill, how many she can preserve, and so on and so forth. She is the God of that. She makes that decision because she what? She's on that God level. That's what's going on today. Okay, because guess what? That suffrage thing is explained here. It says women should control the size of their families and a suffrage state should make short work of repealing these old laws that stand in the way of birth control. You can make this stuff up. Which, which old laws stay, stay in the way of birth control? Which old laws do that? Hmm. Give me that in Psalms 127. Psalms 127, we're going to start at verse 1. The old laws, it says the old laws, because the suffrage, you know what the suffrage goes into? The suffrage goes into, yeah, but you have, you, you have too many kids. That's the suffrage. I'm not going to be able to live my life because I've got too many children now. Now I'm a mother. I can't even leave the house. I'm, all of that's the suffrage they're talking about. So killing the babies, guess what? reduces the quote-unquote suffrage because having children now it's suffrage you see that thing psalms 127 let's start at verse one you know what psalms Let, let's just get to the point read verse three psalms 127 verse three the book of psalms chapter 127 verse three mm -hmm. law children are an heritage of the lord come on and the fruit of the womb is his reward you see that thing? And the, and, the, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. The fruit of the womb, that's the children. The reward is the, is, the children is God's reward. That's the most like God's reward. You understand? They belong to him. Jump down to verse 5. Watch this. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. Now I want to show you something hey. about this verse. Hold on. I want to show you something about this verse. Read that verse again. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 127, verse 5. Uh, happy, happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. Stop right there. Happy is the woman. 
Happy is the man. You see that thing? Happy is the man. Happy is the man that have his quiver full of them. The woman is not full of children. The man is. The man is the one that decides whether a child is born or not. Not the woman. Because the man carries the seed. So when the women talking about, no, no, we must control the size of the family. I must decide on all of that. Guess what? She doesn't bring these children. Her job is to carry the seed, to carry the baby. But she doesn't bring forth children. The man is the one that delivers the seed into the woman. You understand? Guess so therefore the man is the one that decides how many children a woman is going to have. A woman cannot impregnate herself. Read that part again, verse 5. The book of Psalms, chapter 127, chapter 127 verse 5. Happy is the man that is quiver full of them. He shall not be ashamed, uh -huh. but, they, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. So now what you are seeing here is that the Lord is saying, listen, happy is the man that is his quiver full of them. So now imagine the man is the one that is doing what? That is depositing the seed in the woman and the woman keeps killing the babies because she has a right. She has a fundamental right. So the whole reason of why the feminist movement was started, guess what? Was population control. That is the, 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 the message behind the feminist movement. Population control of the black man and the black woman to control the population of the nation of Israel. You understand? That's why they could not get the black woman on the first wave. They couldn't do that because it was going to be too obvious, too suspicious. Oh, wait a minute. Why do they want us in this? So it had to be the white woman. It had to be the white woman that is the one that is in the forefront. And then the second wave, it seemed like, no, it's a white woman. Is we're, we're supporting women. But no, 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 no. The target has always been the black woman because these other nations from developing countries, they are not doing that. The black woman is the one that's doing that. Go back to the article. You're going to start from the highlighted part. In short. In short, and I quote, in short, if feminism, conscious and bold and intelligent, leads the demand, it will be supported by the Stop secret right eagerness. Wait, 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 wait. Stop right there. He says, in short, if feminism, conscious and bold and intelligent, leads the demand. So feminism is the one that's leading the demand on the what? On birth control, abortion, and contraceptives. Hmm. That's some heavy stuff right there. It says, if feminism, conscious and bold and intelligent, leads the demand... So the feminist movement is the one that's leading the demand on the high rate of abortions, the high rate of teenage pregnancy, you understand? Is the one that's leading the charge on the high rate of contraceptives. Feminist, the feminist movement is the one that's leading the charge on this. Okay, come on. Leads the demand. It will be supported by the secret eagerness of all women to control the size of their families. Mm -hmm. And the suffrage state should make short work of repealing these old laws that stand in the way of, of birth control. So the, the old laws that stand in the way of birth control is what? Is the laws that we, is what we just read in Psalms. When it says, Lord, children are an heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Happy is the man that has his quiver full of them. So these are the old laws that are standing in the way of what? Of the feminist movement. Guess what? When we teach family that the black man and the black woman must come together, we teach marriage, we go against the feminist movement. And guess what? The feminist movement is supported by the government. The feminist movement is going, is the one that is really going against us. Because the church, they are pushing abortion. The church, they are pushing homosexual relationships. So the church, the secret source of the church system is feminist, the feminist movement. This is some heavy stuff. Keep reading. She stated, I don't believe there is one woman within the confines of the state who does not believe in birth control. You see that thing right there? 
Because guess what? In the Bundus, you understand? Guess what happens in the Bundus? In the Bundus, you know what? Back then, our mothers, they had a lot of children. And they still were, they were still able to take care of all of these children. But today, the, the reasoning behind the white man, he says, no, when you, have two, when you have more than three children now, or you have three, there's a problem. No, there's so many, you have so many. How are you going to take care of them? How did our foremothers take care of the children then? Because we wasn't rich. We wasn't wealthy. All these children that we had in slavery, we had our form, our mothers, they had seven children, eight children, nine, eleven. Some had fifteen children. So what were they eating? What was they eating? How did we get to the ages that we are now if that's a bad thing? Because guess what? The feminist movement is about the destruction of the black family. That's what the feminist movement is about. You understand? Keep going. The United, the United Nations Human Development Reports 2004 estimated that when both paid, um, that when both paid employment and unpaid household tasks are accounted for, on average, women work more than men. So hold on. The infrastructure that exists today, I'm talking about the, 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 the skyscrapers, the malls, you understand? The roads that are constructed, the bridges that are being built, the companies that are being... Who's, who's, who's leading the charge on this? The men. The men is leading the charge on this. We just read in Genesis chapter, Genesis 2, that is... Because when Eve was created... Every, the, the infrastructure was created already. How did that happen? How, did the, how was the infrastructure created? Because when Eve showed up on the scene, everything was already created. Adam had a job. He had a house. You understand? He knew the laws. He set everything in order. So guess what? How, does, how is it that we says women work more than men? That don't make no sense. You understand? Let's, let's, let's keep it simple. When... When there's domestic violence in the house, right? And the women call the police. Who shows up? Who do, who do they want to show up? Let me ask the sisters. Sisters, domestic dispute going on in the house. You call 10 triple one. Who do you expect to show up on your doorstep? Hello? Yes, sir. Who do you expect to show up at the door? Well, a man, sir. Thank you. Would you want a woman to come when you call about the domestic violence case going on? No, sir. Why not? Why wouldn't you want a woman to show up on the door? What's the reason behind it? Because I wouldn't feel um, safe if a woman shows up because she's a woman as well. Uh-huh. You see how simple this is? a very simple equation. Because the woman cannot exist. The, the woman will not be able to operate if this infrastructure doesn't exist. How is it going to happen? It won't happen. Because for Eve to be brought on the scene, guess what? Adam first had to be given the laws, had to be given the blueprint on how to build stuff. You understand? And he was given a job. So after, when, after Aram had all of that, Aram, Aram was set already. When Eve showed up on the scene, Aram had everything. That's how she was able to survive. That's how she was able to live because of what Aram was doing. The feminist movement, his job is to reverse, is to do role reversals. That's the job of the feminist movement. Excuse me. Okay. Mm. I know this is the this is a lie. Could you read that part right there? Read this highlighted part. According to UN women. So stop. Woman Wait. So whose perspective is this? The woman. You. It says you United Nations women. UN women. Okay. Read that again. According to UN women. Read. 
Women perform 66% of the world's work, produce 50% of the food, but earn 10% of the income and own 1% of the property. So does this stat really make sense? This statistic don't make no sense whatsoever. It says women perform 66% of the world's work. You can make this stuff up. How? I mean, how does that happen? Watch this. Give me Proverbs 8 verse 4. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 4. What I'm showing you is the stuff that has spoiled the black woman. You understand? The feminist movement, which began in Genesis. Okay, Proverbs 8 verse 4. Watch this. The book of Proverbs 8 verse 4. Mm -hmm. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. You see that thing? Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. So if the Lord is the one that is, the most high God calls the men first, the men are going to do the heavy lifting. When the women show up on the scene, everything is going to be set up already. So these statistics is just garbage. They don't make no sense. You understand? He says, unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. What I'm trying to show you, brothers and sisters, is this. Okay? The white man is the devil. Let me say that again. The white man is the devil the Bible speaks of. And what has happened in Genesis 3 is that because now Eve, her desire it was, is no longer to Adam, her desire now is towards the white man and the knowledge that comes with this white man. So her power supply now is who? The white man is her power supply. That's why when we go to camp and say Christ is a black man, we are messing up with her power supply because that would mean she has to disconnect from that power supply and reconnect to the real power of the earth. And when she, look at, she looks at what he looks like, I don't, I can, I'm not going to submit to that nigga right there. That's how the black woman is being spoiled because not only is she being spoiled with what gifts, she's been spoiled with high paying jobs, she's been spoiled and given the illusion that the black man is no good, she's the prize now. That's why now the black man has to be following the black woman around instead of the, the other way around. The man is the prize, not the other way around. He's the prize. That's why Adam was created first and she was given, Eve brought, Eve was brought to Adam, not the other way around, to letting you know that the man is the prize. That's why Eve was brought to Adam, not Adam was not brought to Eve. Okay, watch this. Hmm. Let's look at another one. Let's read this one now. Remember, the feminist movement's job is to do what? Is to do population control. That's the job of the feminist movement. Population control and role reversals. Okay, read that. The article. Abortion in South Africa. Abortion in South Africa is legal on request in the first trimester of pregnancy mm -hmm. and in special circumstances afterwards. Read. Abortion was legal only under very limited circumstances and until the 1st of February, 1997. Mm -hmm. When the Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act, Act 92, of 1996 came into force, providing abortion on demand for a variety of classes. So a, a, a variety of cases. So abortion on demand. You can make this stuff up. Abortion on demand. Because we have video on demand, which is on YouTube and Netflix and all that, but they had abortion on demand. So the Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act was created what based on abortion to what to push abortion on demand. I mean, you can make this stuff up. Okay, keep reading. Legal position. Legal position. In South Africa, a woman of any age can get an abortion on request with no reasons given 
if she is less than 13 weeks pregnant. Now, let's stop right there. Now, let's think now, okay? Let's, let's put our thinking caps on. Could you read that statement again? In South Africa, a woman of any age stop can right get there. an A woman of what? A woman of any age. A woman of any age. Any age. Any age. So the feminist movement's job was to create an environment for our, uh, our daughters of any age to have an abortion on request with no reason given if she is less than 13 weeks pregnant. So that's what, two months plus? Okay. So now keep reading. If, if she is what? With no, with no reasons given. If she is less than 13 weeks pregnant, right? If she is between 13 and 20 weeks pregnant, she can get the abortion. If A, her own physical or mental health is at stake. Mm -hmm. B, the baby will have severe mental or physical abnorm abnormally, abnormalities. 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 Go ahead. Abnormalities. C, mm -hmm. she is pregnant because of incest. Mm. D, she is pregnant because of rape. Rape? E, she is of, she is of the personal opinion that her economic or social situation is sufficient reasons for the termination of pregnancy. Now, you see this part right there, this last one? It says she is of the personal opinion this is her personal opinion that her economic or social situation is sufficient reason for the termination of pregnancy. No, you see, poor people can't be having sex, popping babies. That's why we have to create the abortion clinics at every corner to make sure that these poor people, guess what? Poor people are stressed out. All we do is have sex. Uh, that's why in Egypt we multiply so much because we was under duress. So you wanted comfort, you deal with your wife. You wanted comfort, you deal with your husband. That's why we became a mighty, great and popular in Egypt. You understand? So now, at the same time, they're saying, no, in your po you're impoverished, we're going to create abortion clinics so you can kill these babies. By the, time is, by the time it's time for you to get married, if you do, guess what? Those babies are no longer available anymore. You can't. Your womb is messed up. That's the feminist movement. And that's not what the black woman wants. She's consenting to the killing of the nation of Israel. Yes. You understand? Accessory to commit murder. But watch this part. You see that part when it says she is pregnant because of incest? Or, or no. It says her own physical or mental, mental health is at stake. They don't even explain what that is. The baby will have severe mental or physical abnormality. How do they know that? She is pregnant because of incest. She is pregnant because of rape. There is no scripture in the Bible where somebody was pregnant because of rape and she was forced to kill the baby. You will never see it in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. You understand? Because of incest, it's not in the Bible that the baby was killed. It says she's pregnant because of rape. She is of personal opinion that her economic or social situation is sufficient reason for the termination of pregnancy. But you see that part when it says of any age. So any age and here they say between 13 and 20 weeks pregnant. So wait a minute. So 20 weeks is, most, is close to six months, isn't it? Yeah, it's, 20, it's close to six months, is it not? 20 weeks? It's five months, sir. Hmm. So five months. So you mean to tell me that, so you see what they are saying? Any age, five months. Let's keep reading. Keep going. Next paragraph. 
a woman under the age of 18 will be advised to consult her parents, but she can decide not to inform or consult them if she so chooses. Stop right there. Go back to Genesis 3 verse 5. This is the feminist movement right here. I hope you sisters are paying attention. I want this verse to marinate. Okay. The book of Genesis 3 verse 5. Go ahead. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and ye shall be as gods, knowing mm -hmm. good and evil. You see that thing? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good. Your eyes shall be open to evil, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now read that paragraph again. A woman under the age of 18 will be advised to consult her parents. But will be, will be hold on, will be advised. She's not going to, she's not compelled to do this. She's not forced. She's advised. Okay, meaning it's a suggestion. If you want to, you can tell your parents, but you don't have to. They don't have to know. This is your body. This is your life. You the one that's carrying the baby. They are, your parent is not carrying the baby. You are. You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Keep going. Come on, read the paragraph again. A woman under the age of 18 will be advised to consult her parents, but she can decide not to inform or consult them if she so chooses. Hmm. Come on. A woman who is married or in a life partner relationship will be advised to consult her partner, but she can decide not to inform or consult him or her. That's some heavy stuff right there. <laughs> I hope you brothers and sisters can really see the world that we are living in right now. Okay? By the way, this is Mzanzi for sure. Meaning what? Meaning, meaning, you can be married, ne? And by the way, we're talking about even in the truth. In the truth, that's where you have to be even much more careful. In the truth, you can be married, right? And because the most of the sisters don't believe the scriptures, she's going to say, you know what? I'm going to listen to my daddy Iso. Iso, my daddy Iso said, nah, I don't have to tell you. Here you are, you are pregnant, right? Okay. You as a man, you are expecting the baby. You are buying stuff, you are preparing and all of that stuff. She decides six months in the pregnancy, you know what? I'm going to kill this baby and I'm going to come back home and I'm going to tell him. When, uh, when the woman comes back home, her stomach is flat. What happened to the baby? I'm sorry, I, did, I had an abortion. Because right now you see this class is coming out. I know for a lot of you, it's one ear out the other. But there will come a time where you will get together with a black ashy demon and she will do this. You will remember this class. Because a lot of you, you don't think, oh no, this, it doesn't apply to me. I don't got to listen to it. Okay. Understand what's coming out here. In the truth, you're going to have this type of decisions. You're going to hear dumb, you're going to hear horrific things like this. In the, in the truth, in the body, you're going to hear sisters say stuff like this. And you're going to find brothers pushing sisters to do this. I'm telling you. Okay. Keep going. Read on. A woman under the age of 18 will be advised to consult her parents, but she can decide not to inform or consult them if she so chooses. Hmm. A woman who is married or in a life partner relationship will be advised to consult her partner, but she can decide not to inform him or her. An exception is that if the woman is severely mentally ill or has unconscious or has been unconscious for a long time where, cons where consent of a life partner parent or legal guardian is required that's you see under extreme cases okay let's keep going mm, something i want out of this read the next paragraph the constitution does not explicitly 
explicitly mention abortion. But two sections of the Bill of Rights mention reproductive rights. Reproductive rights. Reproductive rights. Do you have rights when it comes to reproduction? Who decides that? Give me that in Ecclesiastes 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. You know what? Give me 1 Timothy 5 verse 14. Let's read that. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 14. First book of Timothy chapter 5 verse 14. Uh-huh. I will therefore that the younger woman marry. Mm-hmm. Bear children. You see that part? I will therefore the younger women marry. Bear children. So when it says, but it says, but two sections of the Bill of Rights mention reproductive rights. Reproductive rights. The right to reproduce or the right not to reproduce. But the reproductive rights is not talking about I have a right to, to give birth. No, I have the right to kill the baby. That's what these reproductive rights are about. Okay. Read that again, verse 14. First book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse Chapter 5, verse 14. I will therefore that the young woman marry, mm -hmm. bear children, read, guide the house, mm -hmm. give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Because the feminist movement, they are speaking reproach, reproachfully regarding the word of God. They are speaking against God's commandment. That's why they say old laws. Old laws that are stopping them from doing these demonic things that they are doing. So when it says guide the house, you understand? Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. They must what? They get married, bear children, guide the house. This is Titus 2 here. Now, but what I want to show you in this verse, it says bear children, guide the house. That's the suffrage that we read about in the previous article. The suffrage because they are not supposed to be guiding the house. You understand? If they want to fully participate in the modern world, they have a right to kill the baby so they can live their life. That's what that means. That's the, that's the, that's the mission of the feminist movement. You understand? Okay, come on. Go back to the article. Yes, sir. The Constitution does not explicitly mention a portion. You know what? Hmm. Jump down to the next paragraph. In general, mm -hmm. only medical doctors may perform abortions. In you see that part right there when it says in general, meaning it's 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 not clearly defined in general. That's why there's fly by night abortion uh slaughterhouses, okay? Because it says in general, in general, nurses do it too. Okay, they do that. And those that are not even qualified, they do it as well. Keep reading. In general, only doctors may perform abortions. Nurses only, who have... Only medical doctors may perform abortions. Go ahead. Nurses do what? Nurses who have received special training may also perform abortions up to the 12th week of pregnancy. Up to the 12th week of pregnancy. Okay, 12 weeks. Okay, go ahead. A, medi, a, medi, a medicine included abortion no, can no. be performed. Okay, a medicine induced abortion can be performed by any medical doctor at his or her premises up to seven weeks from the first day of the last menstrual period. So it says a medicine induced abortion. Meaning they give you a pill and then it melts the baby in your stomach. You bleed for two weeks. You can't make this stuff up. The unusual method is, is a dose of an antiprogestin followed by a dose of a whatever analog two days later. But there's something I want out of this. Hmm. Read the next paragraph. Health workers. Health workers are under no obligation to perform or take part in an abortion if they do not wish to. If they what? If they do not wish to. If they do not wish to. Now it went from, remember it says, in general, only medical doctors, right? Then it says health workers. What does that mean? 
So that means if I'm working in the health sector, I can do this. That's why it says in general. Then the next part, it says health workers. Keep going. Health workers are under no obligation to perform or take active part in an abortion if they do not wish to. Meaning what? They also can. If they want to, they can do it. Read on. However, they are obligated by the law to assist if it is, if it is required to save the life of the patients, even, mm. if, even if the emergency is related to an abortion. What they're really saying is that when it says, even if the emergency is related to an abortion, no, 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 no. The emergency is the abortion. Kill the baby. That's the emergency. To save the patient. Who's the patient? The mother who doesn't want the child. She's the patient. You understand? The emergency is the pregnancy, is the abortion that needs to be performed so that the mother can fully participate in the modern world. Okay, come on. Health worker, a health worker who is approached by a woman for an abortion may decline if they choose to do so, mm. but are obligated by the law to inform the woman of her rights and refer her to another health worker or facility where she can get the abortion. What they are really telling you is that it's, easy, it's easier to get an abortion now. It's easier to get an abortion than to get medical attention of anything else outside of this. It's easy to get an abortion. Hmm. Okay, that's it on that. That's it on that. Go back to Genesis 3. I just wanted to touch on that situation. Genesis 3 verse 5 again. The book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye mm -hmm. shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now give me Sirach 36.24 now. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 36, verses 24. He that gets at the wife, beginneth the position. Read. A help like unto himself, and a pillar of rest. So, come on, come on. When no hedge is, the they the position is spoiled. Stop right there. Where no hedge is, there the position is spoiled. What I wanted to show you is that is how the black woman, how the black this this is just some of the things. I didn't go through a whole lot of stuff because I had a lot of notes. So I'm just gonna I'm not gonna touch that in, in because of time. But what I wanted to show you, brothers and sisters, is this. The minute the black woman detached from the black man, she became a target and she's vulnerable to attack. Because you attack the black man, you attack the black woman. That's how you're going to weaken this man, to submit to the black woman. That is the whole point of this. You understand? And the feminist movement is leading the charge on this, to destroy the black family. You understand? The feminist movement is leading the charge on this thing. Because what's going on now is that I'm seeing a lot of white men with black women. I'm seeing a lot of that now. A lot. I'm seeing a lot of that. A lot of white men with black women. So what that means? The black man, the black woman was separated from the black, from the black woman was separated from the black man and the black man is left out there by himself because he's good for nothing. That's how they paint us. Then the black woman has been detached or unplugged from her black man. Now she's been given this, this, she's been given this illusion that now she's on some level. And guess what? Now the serpent has free access to the black woman. And guess what the serpent is doing? What, what the white man is doing? He is spoiling her. You see that thing? He is spoiling her with philosophies, vain deceit. And physically, he is spoiling her. Spiritually, he's spoiling her, and physically, he's spoiling her. So now, imagine now, now as we are building the twelve tribes of the nation of Israel, our sisters, guess what's happening to them? 
you're going to be sitting in a situation that I'm not going to I'm not taking or I'm not taking care of the white man's leftovers. I'm not doing that. Or the Arab men's leftovers because that's what these Arabs are doing in the communities in the Kasis. That's what they are doing. And they go back to they go back to Saudi Arabia. They leave you with their babies here. This is the reality of the situation. This is what we are living in or living with currently where we at. Calfontaine, Midrand, Alex, you understand? Tembisa, Eboni. That's, this is the situations that are going on on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm seeing a lot of Arab babies in the communities now with black mothers. That's just a simple example. You see what I'm saying? Because where no hedge is, there the position is spoiled. So, sisters, I'm just painting a picture for you to really to see when you detach from your power source, all hell broke loose. You understand? All hell broke loose. And that's where we're at now. All right? I'm going to end the class right here. Okay, give me that in First Corinthians 11. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed to bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had served, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, this to ye, as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till ye come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Mosai a hand for that. All praise to the Mosai.